all my contact information and my NMLS number is here. This is how you can identify Jim Walsh and Blue Leaf Lending. Um, we're a subsidiary of Midwest Community Bank and we provide financing in all 50 states the bank provides. Okay, so if you wanna contact me, feel free. I can give you a copy of the presentation if you share your email address with me. Um, so today's goals um, of this presentation is to take the fear out of uh, the decision to obtain a loan. Uh, a lot of people think, hey, I, I needed 20% down or I, my credit isn't good enough. I only have a 660. Um, we wanna dispel some of those things and, ma and make you empowered to, uh, that you can obtain a loan and find out what your payment is and compare that versus your rent. Okay, so we're gonna go through what an example of a debt to income ratio is. That's basically, can you afford the house? How the loan decision is made. We're gonna go through four tests that you basically have to pass and all this different information you're gonna provide. Um, we're gonna go through a slide about what you wish you knew before buying. Um, so you'll be a little more prepared when you look at that list to make sure that you, you hit all those marks. We'll look at some relevant statistics and some lending tips about making the process easier and better for you. And uh, we'll talk about loan officer education versus marketing. And I'll have some examples for you uh, about that. And we'll talk a little bit about security and how, uh, how important that is in, that, uh, uh, in, in today's world of identity theft. Okay, let's go to the next slide is the customer's experience. Satisfaction equals reality and expectations. So um, we can only do a good job if, uh, if you know, we have good cooperation uh, in the lending process. We work back and forth. What I like to tell people is during the transaction, we become best friends. When the transaction's over, you go to find new friends, okay? And then we're done. What I wish I knew prior to buying. This is a good screen based on my 19 years of experience. These are what people have told me over time. Um, you know, they have some regrets. So, you know, everyone's gonna have a different experience and make the best decision they thought at the time, but these are some things to think about before you make your decision. Um, so, a lot of times, I'll give you a good example here. A lot of times, a customer uh, will call me up, found the house of their dreams, and we go to pull a credit report, and the score isn't, you know, gonna get them the best interest rate. Um, and are disappointed. Um, if they had called me six months earlier and we had got pre-qualified and I gave them some advice, maybe we could improve that score. So being prepared in life, you know, is, is really important and credit and, and saving money and all the different things that are involved in buying a house is part of that. Okay, homeownership benefits. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to buying. You got stability of payment. Um, we have really historically low interest rates at the moment. Um, every time you make a payment, you're building equity in your future. You know, you'll own more of the home. Um, there are potential tax deductions. We'll always refer you to, to your CPA to get those answered, but there, there's potential tax deductions. Um, the home can, you know, most likely will increase over time. The history of real estate is very positive, uh, but the value can go up or down. Um, make it your own. And when you rent, you can't paint the walls and decorate exactly the way you want. When you own your house, you can do that. And uh, you don't have to worry about rental increases. Um, your payment on a fixed rate mortgage will always stay the same. You do need to know that taxes and insurance can go up, increase your payment, but your your loan amount payment will not change. Okay, um, and then we kind of outline some of those items here in more detail. Um, I wanted to show you an interesting slide about appreciation of real estate in different markets. 
uh, at the very bottom, you'll see Chicago, Naperville, Arlington Heights. That covers like basically Chicagoland. And we were up one year ago, 5.34%. So you're pretty good. But you can see other areas that have improved or not improved. Um, the history of interest rates. So this is a chart from 1971 to current. You can see that interest rates have really kind of slowly gone down over time. Um, so historically, it's a good time to buy. Um, okay, so in order for you to understand um, the loan scenario, um, every what I want to make make people aware of is that not everybody gets the same interest rate quoted to them, okay? It's all risk-based. So we have all these different items here that we listed that we judge risk on. And I put an example together here so you can see what a payment would be. So I, I tell every customer when they call me up on the phone, I say, hey, you know, you need to pass four tests in order to qualify for a loan, no matter what type of loan you're coming in to get for residential real estate. Um, those four tests are first is credit. So we'll pull a credit report for you at no cost uh, up front, and uh, we'll evaluate your credit. Uh, you know, you'll get three scores, one from each bureau, and the middle of those threes is what we call your credit indicator score. And that will be, uh, you know, a great deal will determine how your interest rate you'll, you'll be quoted, amongst many other factors. Okay, and we'll look on your credit report for any activity that might prohibit you from a loan. And we'll go through your credit report to make sure that all the accounts that you have are accurate. Because um, a lot of times it's proven that they aren't always accurate. Okay, test number two is income. We'll look at your tax returns, your pay stubs, your W-2s, if you're self-employed, all your different tax returns, and we'll determine what we call a gross monthly income. So um, if you're making uh, $10,000 a month, what we do is we take all those monthly obligations on your credit report and uh, all the total house payment of the one that you're going to buy, and we divide that by the gross monthly income. So don't worry about understanding that yet because I'm gonna have some screens to go over that. The third test is uh, assets. So you have to say you're buying a $100,000 house, your down payment is 3%. You need to prove to me that you had $3,000 of liquid assets to qualify for the loan. Let's say that your closing costs were three grand, then you need to have $6,000 of assets to prove that you can close the loan liquid. Okay, so you just show me a bank statement. And we wanna make sure that you didn't borrow the money from anybody. There's no large deposits that show up that aren't from your employer or something, and we're good to go. Okay, the fourth test is property. So you'll get a, an appraisal on the property, and if you're buying it for $100,000 and the appraiser says that's a market value price, um, we're all set, we're good. Now, if it were to come in at $97,000, you can still perform the loan, but we need to make sure that the $3,000 is made up by one of the parties in the transaction. So a seller could lower his price to 97, a buyer could bring the extra 3,000, or you guys could compromise. In addition, uh, the appraisal is gonna show that the property is in good condition, that all the, um, all the different um, you know, utilities work, um, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with the house that would stop you from getting it. All right, so let's move on here. Um, so a debt to income ratio, um, you know, it basically tells you what you can afford. So, you know, most people will call up and say, hey, I, I wanna buy a house, but I don't know what I can afford. So put an example together to kind of determine 43% um, is a very conservative rate of approval, but that's basically our, our, our uh, manual underwriting guideline. Um, conventional conforming loans can go all the way to 50%. 
and in FHA loans and government uh, VA loans can go even higher than that. Um, but there's, you know, we all run them through an automated system and it will evaluate everything and it will tell us whether you can qualify. Okay, so I just threw 43% out there just to give you guys an idea of what might be probable. Okay, so here's uh, an example of debt to income. So in our example, in that risk assessment, I put together a 30-year fixed payment with principal and interest, mortgage insurance, annual taxes, home insurance, and a total payment. And then I showed you what the credit report was, and that, that's our total debt, okay? That's our total debt ratio when you add it up there. So we got uh, 31, 32 a month, and then let's go to the next screen. And then we divide the 3132 by our gross monthly income and we're at 38%. So that loan's a winner. We're under 43% so we can qualify. Um, all right. Um, we always run it through an automated system to confirm that, but most of the time that's gonna work, 99%. Okay, so what are our takeaways so far? Um, Start the process with your loan officer and have a realistic expectation of what you can do. So the best, the best thing that I always tell people is, what's your dream house that you really like that you're looking around at? And we use that property as an example and I put a payment together based on that one. We pull a credit report and we figure out whether or not that debt to income ratio is gonna work, okay? so. Then you need to understand your affordability. What exactly do I mean by that? Um, what I exactly mean is um, you could shop for a house and it'd be in one community and the taxes are say $5,000 a year. Or you can shop in a neighboring community in that same size house, the taxes might be $10,000 a year. Okay, so that would affect your debt to income ratio. So you, just need to be cognizant that a loan officer can't always just tell you, hey, you can afford a certain dollar amount because the property might have taxes of 10,000 and the other one five. Okay, so there's a little bit of error in there. So you wanna work with them and say, hey, I'm going to see you know, this house or that house and I wanna make sure I can afford it. You know, And then we can put a payment together for you, make sure it's accurate and you know, whether or not you can afford it. Um, we can kind of, the reason we give you a number is to make it easier for you to make a search, okay? Um, all right, so moving along here, um, pre-approval or uh, pre-qualification, um, you know, we're gonna have a, perform a loan interview with you and uh, uh, we're gonna ask you to pull credit and we're gonna ask you where you worked on your job, how long, we're gonna ask you a multitude of questions uh, that take about 10 or 15 minutes on the phone. And then we're gonna request documentation to validate your income, your assets, your job history, et cetera. Um, okay, um, here's a general document list. Uh, you know, there could be things that don't apply that uh, for every borrower, you know. So I'll give you an example, a college student that just graduated, they can buy a house without a two year work history. They just have to show us our transcripts to show that they were in college. And uh, you can use that as a work history. So document lists can be different for each borrower. This is just a general document. Okay, credit. So credit is uh, something that, no one can really put their finger on and tell you 100% exactly how your score came to be what it be. The first thing I would tell you is that the mortgage industry uses a model that is not available to the consumer. So when you go to Discover or your credit service and they say your credit score was this, well, that was for a consumer profile. A mortgage credit profile can differ from that, Amazingly, I've had experiences where the people show me their, their credit score on their service and it was exactly the same and sometimes it's widely different. So it's difficult for us to say why, other than they have different scoring models, different scoring systems, and 
um, maybe different data that's been, been used. Um, okay, so what are the things that make up your credit score? Are all these different buckets of points that make up your score? So in the mortgage world, 850 is perfect and 300 is the absolute worst you could do. So to give you an idea, um, if you have a 760 or above, you would be, you know, A plus in school and get the best interest rates available. Um, and then 740, 720, 700, 680 are each 20 points. You usually see some type of change in the risk and the rate that's uh, quoted. Um, and then these different categories, uh, we can, um, you know, we can go over if people want to pull a credit report, but they they basically have a pie chart here that kind of tells you what these different categories um, account for in your score. Okay, a um, couple things is you don't really want to dispute accounts uh, while you're getting a mortgage. Um, if you do dispute account, you want to make sure that you have proof um, that you know you're, you're correct before you dispute it. Okay. Um, a lot of people will call me up and they had disputed all their accounts and I will tell them that they have to take it out of dispute because they don't have a valid credit score. Okay, the underwriter will be looking for a valid score. So when they take them out of dispute, the credit score will go back down. Usually people are disputing uh, a derogatory account, an account that they may have made late payments on or something. Okay. Um, Let's kind of move along here. Um, I, I will uh, provide this uh, presentation to anybody who provides their email address. I can email it to them if they want uh, when we're done. So don't feel like if you miss something that we can't uh, go back. All right. Um, and I, I, I put in there a lot of information. This is more like base that you know that you can go back and read more and get more out of it than just quite my presentation. Um, okay. Um, credit tips. So this is the good stuff. You want to pay all your bills on time. That's an easy one um, to think about. Um, people make the mistake of if I don't have any credit, you know that's good. No, you need credit to be judged on credit. So. Using your credit cards is good, but paying them in full every month is the perfect way to do it. Um, installment loans, you buy a, a car and your payment's $500 a month. If you pay 600, your balance will shrink and your payment longevity will shrink and uh, um, the credit bureaus will uh, acknowledge that you're less of a risk for default on that loan and your credit score will go up. Um, Okay, and there's a, uh, a couple other things here. Um, one that a lot of people make a mistake on is that they close accounts. Okay, so longevity of maintaining a relationship with a creditor is always a positive in the mortgage world, in your credit score. Okay, um, credit flexibilities. Um, sometimes, you know, a parent will, Co-sign for a student loan, a car, a mortgage, et cetera, to help out a family member. Um, as long as we can prove that you have 12 months payments on time um, from the, you know, the person that you co-sign for, that they're actually, you know, the, the son or whatever is making the payment, we can take that out of your debt to income ratio. Just wanted to let you kind of know that there are some flexibilities there. Um, Okay, so um, we kind of covered the income test already. Um, here's some statistics from Genworth um, on household incomes of buyers. I just thought this was an interesting slide um, to show that all different people uh, of different economic backgrounds are buying houses. So I wanna take that fear away and how the decisions made I don't make enough money. I didn't have a big enough down payment. Um, I wanted you to know that there's solutions for almost all these problems. 
Um, we just have to make sure that we fit you in to a loan program that will work for you. And, and that's my job is to provide the options and give you that knowledge so that you don't have the fear and you'll go out and look if you want to buy a house. Okay. Um, here's some recommended lists that I pulled something from Radiant Guarantee Mortgage Insurance Company, and this is kind of what they recommend. Um, we, in the mortgage industry, you know, we'll approve you at higher limits, but I always tell people that your personal limits is your decision. That's your personal preference. Uh, I don't know how much you want to spend to go out to dinner or entertainment on Friday and Saturday night, okay? Or how you wanna spend your money. So that's something where you wanna analyze your budgets and, and make the decision that's right for you and build a house and a payment that's a good fit for you. Okay, asset verification, that was our third test. So we're just gonna collect bank statements, checking savings, you know, and, and see that you have the money available for down payment and closing. Okay, and bank statements, we're gonna ask you for, you know, full bank statements, not a transaction history from the bank. We wanna see your name, your account number, all the pages, even if blank, you know, all that good stuff. Okay, um, here's an interesting slide on the age of buyers. So, you know, you'll see that even at 18 years old, people are buying houses, okay? Um, and you'll see that even elderly people are buying houses. Um, so don't think that anyone can't do it. Um, age is not a concern. Um, you know, and then this is an interesting slide that, you know, first time buyers um, basically account for about 33% of the new homes that are bought in the United States. Um, and uh, this is telling you a little bit about that. Okay, uh, asset flexibilities. Um, we talked about different ways that you can get to uh, your down payment and closing costs. So I just wanted to give you some of those options. And you know, if you have a church or a charity, a nonprofit that provides it, you know, bring that information to us, and we'll review it and we'll make sure that you can do it. Okay. Um, so cash, cash to close formula. So I just kind of wanted to put together an example so that you could see um, how things work. So this is preference more for Illinois. Um, everything's the same, but in Illinois, we pay our real estate taxes one year in arrears, okay? So what that means is the seller is gonna give you a credit for all the taxes that he owes on the property but is not able to pay the government institution yet. So, you know, you you in Illinois you get a tax credit. You'll have less cash to close when you sell your property. You'll give some of that money back away. Um, okay. Um, and then I kind of wanted to outline like a lot of the different closing costs that will show up. Um, we can go over that. When you do a loan, you'll go over a, a loan estimate and get a more clear understanding of what all those things are. I just wanted to let you know what some of the things are. Um, we talked about the tax credit. Okay, our fourth test is the property valuation. So we talked about that, about, you know, we're gonna send out an appraiser, he's gonna prepare a report, he's gonna look at comparable properties and make sure that those properties uh, you know, support uh, uh, transactional purchase price, okay? Um, it's a seller's market, okay? So um, this slide, you know, things may have changed with uh, the current pandemic and coronavirus with real estate. But um, this slide really shows that people are playing close to the asking price, okay? So you can, negotiate the price and you'll work with that with your realtor or you work, you know, you, you'll negotiate the price yourself. Um, but most people seem to be paying pretty close to what the purchase price is. And a few people are paying above list. Um, you know, and here's an interesting slide about how people make their decision 
and um, you know what's important to them and uh, about the property that they the reason why they would have bought where they bought. Um, so that's always interesting. Um, all right, so our takeaways. As you can see, there's a tremendous amount of detail and a lot of different parties of the transaction. So the better you understand that process and provide the documentation required, the better your experience will be. Um, uh, starting with a pre-qualification, uh, for me, is your best strategy. Um, okay, so uh, there are all different kinds of mortgages that are out there. So you have uh, government loans and conventional loans. So if you're a veteran, you have the VA program that you could qualify for. Um, there's FHA, and if you live in a rural area, we have the uh, USDA, which is a rural program. In Cook County, where Blue Island's located, there are no USDA loans. Um, FHA is a great product. Um, and then we have conventional loans. Conventional loans just mean that they're non-government. Um, in Illinois, we have something called the conforming limit. So the government will support loans to 510,000, 510,400 for a one unit property. Um, so if you go above that, you would be a non-conforming loan and we can do that. It would just be uh, investors that will support that. The government doesn't support it. Okay, and then we have fixed rate loans and we have adjustable interest rate loans. All fixed rate means is that your payment's never gonna change. If you do a 30 year fix, your principal and interest payment will be the same for all 30 years. Adjustable rate, you know, a lot of times people are looking for a lower payment and they'll do an adjustable rate loan. And let's say our adjustable rate product was a 10 year arm. All that means is that your interest rate's fixed for 10 years. Then after that, based on some statistics each year, your interest rate can change. So those are for uh, risk takers. Um, most people choose the fixed rate options. Uh, you, you know, mo most people don't pick the arms. Okay, um, obtaining a mortgage. Um, here's just a couple definitions about some different terms. And, um, you know, 30-year fix isn't the only product you can do. You can do them in 20, 15, 10-year annual terms. Um, you can buy down the interest rate if you want to pay points, um, a discount fee. Um, sometimes people want to, you know, get the lowest interest rate possible in payments, so they're willing to pay a fee to lower the interest rate. Uh, just want to let you know that those things exist. Um, you don't need to understand them until you get a little bit farther into a, like an actual loan. And we can provide you scenarios. Um, okay. Um, Mortgage insurance. So just a little bit about mortgage insurance. Uh, anytime you do a conventional conforming loan and you have less than 20% equity position on the purchase, you'll qualify for something, you'll have to have mortgage insurance, okay? And this can come in several different varieties. Um, the most popular one is a monthly mortgage insurance payment, okay? But some people choose to buy it out and pay it as a one-time fee, or sometimes the uh, lender will increase his interest rate and um, buy out the mortgage insurance as a one-time fee. Those options are available. So when I say talking about, this is a great example about talking about marketing versus education, you'll see someone advertising, hey, we have no mortgage insurance and you can put down 3%. Well, the interest rate is probably higher on that loan than it would compare if he didn't have the mortgage insurance, you know, the monthly payment. So you have to compare and understand that people could be marketing to you to, in order to engage you in a conversation so that you'll do business with them. It's not necessarily educational. So you have to be aware that when you see commercials and advertisements, they're only telling you enough to get a phone call. Okay. Um, all right, we kind of talk, 
um, FHA versus conventional. So this is a very common question. Someone will say to me, like, why would I do one over the other? And they're both good programs. Um, the reason you might pick one or the other is because it fits your credit profile better. Um, so uh, typically FHA loans are uh, lower down payment loans and they work better with lower credit scores. Okay, they, the overall payment is less and, and works out. Or there's some type of flexibility that allows you to obtain a loan. Conventional loans seem to be more risk prone and graded. So they want higher credit scores, higher down payments, but they are cheaper on different ends on the mortgage insurance. So we can compare those. Know there's pros and cons of them and that that can be complicated, but that's a long conversation. And one, when you get into a loan, we can go way deeper into, or you guys can ask questions. Um, so, one of the things that I wanted to bring you is, is you want to make sure that you're looking for a home that you can afford so that you're not out there being disappointed about looking at property you can't afford. Okay. Um, so you want to make sure that you want to find out what you can afford first in the payment and then figure out what's out there that you can fit to that so that your search is applicable to what you could do. Um, okay, so some of the steps, you know, you're going to need to find a realtor if you want to work with them, or you're, you're going to need to go to the internet and figure out how to find property that people are buying and, and selling. So there are a lot of different websites. I don't want to advertise or say any of their names, um, but there's a lot of different places you can go and search for property. Okay. Um, and I kind of want to outline some of the things the realtor can do for you and what, what his value would be if you, if you chose one. People are more and more going away from using a realtor, but they do have value. And uh, I did read a statistic that 89% of home buyers uh, used a realtor last year, 2019. Um, in Illinois, we have an attorney. Not every state is like that. Like in Indiana, um, the title company will represent both sides and you don't have attorneys go to your closings. Okay, uh, but in Illinois, there's are some of the benefits that an attorney provides. Okay, uh, our takeaway here, um, you wanna analyze your spending and expenses. Um, well, ensure you make a good decision so you're not house poor. Um, a lot of the complaints I get is, you know, hey, that payment was too high. I shouldn't have bought that house. I should have went with one that was $25,000 less and had a lower payment. Um, only you can make those choices. Uh, so you just have to, you know, uh, make a careful decision. Okay. Um, at this point, when you found a house and uh, you hired your realtor, an attorney, and you got a contract, that's when you come to me and you make a loan application. We lock an interest rate and we start the process by ordering an appraisal and submitting your loan to underwriting. And, and uh, if there's any questions, we ask for paperwork or clarification. We get those things fixed and you get a loan. Okay, um, underwriting. Um, we just kind of talked about that. Um, it, you know, eventually when you get a clear to close, you close the transaction, you'll go to a title company, you'll sign all the paperwork, you'll bring your money, congrats, you own all. Okay, lending tips. This is uh, probably the best screen here on the whole presentation. Um, these are things to do and not to do um, that will make your loan process uh, easier and less stressful, and it will stop you from making a mistake that would uh, make a complication in you obtaining the loan. Um, so believe it or not, yeah, file your tax returns, your state returns, you know, um, pay all your bills on time, um, don't quit your job, <laughs> you know, don't quit your job before the closing, even though they told you to clear to close. Uh, you laugh, but that has happened to me. You know what I mean? I told them they were clear to close, so they quit their job. 
Now, don't do that until far after the close. Um, okay, so you can go over those and security. Um, one thing I really want to impress and that's super important in our society is data protection. Your mortgage person has your bank statements, your social security numbers, your birthday, all this vital information. And you want to make sure that whoever you go to, you know, you know where their office is, you know the company has a reputation, you know the person has a reputation. Um, you can always look up our NML S number, which was on the front page, to see if we've ever gotten in trouble before um, for doing something unethical. Um, and you just really, a lot of people think that you just apply online and go anywhere and shop this around. You understand that you're sending your information out there. You should go with someone you trust and it has a good reputation, in my opinion. Okay, so. I'm sure you guys have a million questions. Uh, I hope you do. Um, I appreciate your time.